Good morning. About last night, presented by Ed Pray the Real Estate. Ed will sell your home guaranteed, just like he did for me. We're under contract after only three days on the market. And uh, we're going through the process right now of getting this sucker closed on here in the next couple of weeks. And that's selling this home. And I'm buying my new pad with Ed Prather's help as well. So cannot tell you how much I love Ed Prather. Welcome to the snowpocalypse that's going on. We'll get to the avalanche. Also, we'll get to the nuggets. Both great things to share. D-Max, Mac, or I talk to you about whatever's on your mind over the past 24 hours. Plus, we will have Nate and Chad on at a little bit later today because of the snow. A little bit later. So we're moving uh, chocolate paint today to 9 a.m. Just a heads up on that. So program adjustment. But it was a blast being on both for the Avalanche with five to go and our five to go program for the Nuggets. Both have great news to share. Great news to share. We'll get there. It's a very significant day for both teams. But first, we start with the mock draft. And I don't know if I could be more clear with how I feel about what the Broncos should do. Their lack of activity in uh, free agency is, you know, and I'm just going to check because sometimes I just miss stuff that happens late at night. I don't mean to miss it, but I do. Um, all right. So it did happen, like, officially with the, the new year being upon us. The Broncos have officially released Russell Wilson. And we're all kind of waiting to hear what the split's going to be. I'm reading from Mike Kliss. Wow, so they did. They are absorbing 53 million this season and 32 million in 2025. They're taking the major hit to this year. They made that decision. Fascinating. Okay. All right, what about that, huh? So the Broncos are taking the 53 million hit this year. 32 million in 2025. Wow. Okay. Fascinating. Well, we should think about what that actually means. Um, so it's a 53-32 split. That's what it'll be known as for the rest of the time in Broncos history. 53-32. And it's, um, you know, the decision was made on what gives the team the best chance to win in 2024 and 2025. It includes forecasting the salary cap, roster maintenance, future contract considerations. It was decided on uh, before the start of free agency. And it does explain, for the first time in years, reading Mike Kliss again in decades, um, had more substantial player subtractions from the first wave of free agency than additions. Yeah, it, we, we felt that. Like when we were on the radio yesterday, it was just like, whoa. They're not doing anything. What are they saving this money for? And uh, yeah, now we know. Now we know. So they've lost Jerry Judy trade, Lloyd Cushenberry cash, Justin Simmons cut, Josie Jewell cash free agency, dump Chris Manhurts, defensive lineman Jonathan Harris, and uh, Mike Purcell and Fabian Moreau. Um, see you later, alligator. Best of luck. They signed Brandon Jones and defensive tackle. Malcolm Roach, but both to relatively low deals. They locked up PJ Locke, Troutman, Michael Burton, and little Jordan Humphrey, but again, super low level deals. Um, more money, more money players went out than came in. The Broncos made room for Wilson's dead cap by converting large salaries into pro rated bonuses. Mike McGlinchey, Zach Allen, Ben Powers. And in terms of replacing Wilson, uh, they kind of inquired about Sam Darnold. <clears throat> he wanted $10 million and wanted to go to Minnesota. He got his wish. So they really weren't, you know, into that very much. Um, they still may add a vet quarterback. So Jimmy G and Ryan Tannehill are both available. And 
Sam Howell, Zach Wilson, Justin Fields, all of a sudden, all those guys come into play. But the most likely leader in the clubhouse to start this year is Jared Stidham. And they still, they still, I think they'll stay at 12. I don't think they'll move up. And then they'll have a decision between probably um, Knicks and Penix. I think J.J. McCarthy is going to go too quick. Wow. Okay. Well, that's big news this morning. Super huge news. Thanks to uh, Mike Kliss. And, you know, what are your what are your thoughts? So from now and forever, it'll be called 53-32. The 53-32 split. The Broncos take the biggest hit this year. I like it. I do. I mean, we talked about just biting the bullet. This is it. And if you want um, a sign of rebuilding, here we go. You know, they don't have to come out and and have a press conference and actually wave a white flag. They can just, you can tell by their actions what they're doing. This is the biggest gut check rebuild. I, I, I do wonder how you as a Broncos fan react to this. 53-32 53-32 split. Well, okay, so it's official. Woof, wow. Next year, they figure to have cap space close to, t- to $100 million. But you're going to need... Oh, so Pat Sertan is... He's here, folks. He ain't going anywhere. Uh, Quinn Miners, No. This is a big move for Sertan. Wow, look at that. Crazy. Sertan is going to get paid. The Broncos are telling you Patrick Sertan is as, as important, more important than any other player they've basically ever had. That's wild. Okay. Corner. Wild. 53-32. So I'm looking at a new mock draft. Yeah, let's. I'll get to your reaction. I can't wait to hear what you guys have to say about this. And we'll get to the nuggets and the ass here in a second. Um, in this mock draft, the Bears uh, select. This is after this could possibly include trades, although I don't think there's any in here, actually. Hold on. Okay, this is done by Field Yates ESPN. Bears take Caleb Williams. Commanders take. Jaden Daniels. The Patriots take Drake May. Okay. Cardinals take Marvin Harrison Jr. The Chargers keep Keenan Allen, take J.C. Latham, offensive tackle for Alabama. Again, these don't involve trades, so take this with a grain of salt. Malik Neighbors, wide receiver, LSU, uh, goes to the Giants. Titans take Joe Alt. Offensive tackle, Notre Dame. The Falcons take Dallas Turner, although that's a ripe spot to make a trade with, but okay. Bears at nine, Romo Dunze. Um, Fashionu, offensive tackle, goes to the Jets. Minnesota takes J.J. McCarthy. If the Broncos really love J.J. McCarthy and we find out they didn't move to do a deal to go from 12 to, say, 8 with the Falcons and J.J. McCarthy goes to the Vikings and the the Broncos, we, we find out later, oh, yo, that was our guy. Blah, 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 blah. And the Denver Broncos, um, according to this mock, take Terry and Arnold, a cornerback out of Alabama. You got to be fucking kidding me. Guys, this is. I, I don't even know what to say. And that's with Brock Bowers on the board. I mean, I, I don't I don't know what to say. I don't know what to say. I had a total nightmare. Total nightmare.
total nightmare. I... Flabry acid. More um, on all of this with uh, Nate and Chad at 9 a.m. Snowpocalypse has pushed our little broadcast back to 9 a.m. with Nate and Chad, but just for a day, and we'll be at 8 a.m. most of the time. Let's turn to your Denver Nuggets. Coach Malone. Yeah, hey, really quick. That's a hell of a win. And it's a way to start off a four-game road trip with a very business-like mentality. Uh, we held that team to 42% from the field, 88 points, and 23 from the three-point line. Fourth quarter, only 17 points. Could have given this to a lot of guys, but I want to give it to my man, CB. Yes, sir, CB! Running, chasing, all over people. And uh, Reggie Jackson, where you at, Reg? Big shot. Seven big points, man. Seven big, big points. But everybody on the bench, you guys all came in and helped contribute to that win, made big plays or a big shot. Let's not be satisfied. 16 games to go. We're in first place, I believe, right now. Let's try to stay there, okay? Bring it in, man. Proud of you guys. Family on three. One, two, three. Thank you, DenverNuggets.com. Always love seeing that stuff. Um, yeah, the standings are out. The Nuggets. Take a picture of this. The Nuggets are in first place in the West, in the Western Conference. The Avalanche are tied for first place in the Central Division. And the team they beat is in first place in the West. We'll get to the Avs in a second. But what a win by the Nuggets. I mean, what a win. This team is crazy good. Jokic only had 12 points, but 14 rebounds. Only took eight shots. Did not even attempt a three. Didn't need to. Michael Porter Jr. was absolutely on fire. He scored 25% of his team's points with 25 points. Like how I did that math. Nine of 16 shooting, five of nine for three. When MPJ is hot, just let him go, man. Just let him go. Let him be hot. Because he's one of the most dangerous shooters in the NBA when he's feeling it, and he was feeling it. He also had seven rebounds, which is fantastic. Jamal Murray with 14 points, five of 14, two of eight. Not a great shooting night for Jamal, um, but no turnovers. And you'll take that sometimes out of a guard, too. Caldwell Pope remains one of the best defensive players in the NBA, and Aaron Gordon had a productive night with 16 points. Again, it's a slug it out sort of game. Seven points from Reggie Jackson. He actually had nine, but at one point he had seven in a row. He was four of nine, one of one from three. And I, I know what Malone's doing. They're definitely trying to pump him up. They want Reggie to be productive for the playoffs, and they got to get him back to where he was early in the season. Holiday had thir 13 minutes and only two points. Didn't have a great game. One of five shooting wasn't his night. Peyton Watson had six points in 23 minutes, and Christian Brown on the defensive end of things got them going as well as a perfect night shooting three or three. I mean, this was a great team win for them to score a hundred points and get 24 points from the bench. That's outstanding. If you got 25% of whatever points you got for a game from your bench, you'd be in great shape, great shape. Meanwhile, you see a slug it out game where Zeke Naji only plays five minutes. So you can see that the Nuggets have different rotations possible really without having a significant, you know, automatic fill-in guy for Yoke. Five minutes from Zeke in the playoffs, seriously, may be enough. If that's good enough for them, it's certainly good enough for me. So congratulations to the Nuggets, uh, 188. They got the Heat's number. They beat the Heat. They've beaten the Celtics. We've got to get, they've beaten the Bucs. Um, uh, the next home game is against the Knicks. That's not until, I think, the 21st. I'll double check that for you real quick. Um, yeah, 21st against the Knicks. That'll be fun, considering the ass kicking the Knicks gave the, the Nuggets in New York at the end of a long, horrible, snow filled. Uh, travel plagued uh, trip. So you don't take that too seriously. Off to San Antonio for a game on Friday 
against the Spurs. The Spurs are not a great team, but they've got Wimbyama. And I, I don't sleep on the Spurs. They're a little tricky. Dallas on Sunday at 1.30, and then on the Mar um, Tuesday, March 19th against Minnesota. Okay, what a way to start the road trip. Fantastic. We do move on. Um, other scores in the NBA last night. Pistons over the Raptors, 113-104. Magic over the Nets, 114-106. Bulls beat the Pacers, 132-129. Hornets over the Grizz, 110-98. Cavs pounded the Pelicans. That's good. 116.95. Mavs beat the Warriors. The Warriors are just toast, man. They are they are toast. 109.99. Blazers beat the Hawks 106-102. And the Kings beat the Lakers. I'm sure, that felt good for them. 120 to 107. Meanwhile, you have an unbelievable matchup in hockey last night. About last night, when it comes to your avalanche, wow, wow, wow. Four to three winners in overtime where they trailed three nothing. Three nothing. They were down to the first place in the Western Conference, Vancouver Canucks, where the Canucks had three days of rest before this game. And the Avs are coming off a of back-to-back. Bananas that the Avs won this game. They were down 1-0 24 seconds into the game. First shot. Second shot taken two minutes and 20 seconds later. That goes in. It's 2-0 Canucks three minutes into the game on two shots. Then Zadorov gets a goal in the second. That's how the first period ended. Miserable. Second period, Zadorov gets a goal at 423. And you're like, well, this game's toast. And then Miko Rantanen gets a goal with 1.7 seconds left to go on a feed from Taves. <laughs> that was gargantuan gargantuan it just broke the ice it gave a little momentum and it sucks the energy out of the home team to allow a goal with 1.7 seconds and it was miko between two defenders at the mouth of a goal a feed from taves uh, right to the middle of the goal crease that miko tips uh, tips in you can't allow a goal like that uh, that that is bad defense that's undisciplined hockey by the Canucks, and we'll take it. So now what? Well, they get a five-on-three opportunity, and Nathan McKinnon blasts home a goal from his spot. The McCannon. McCannon? Power play goal, assisted by McCaw and Miko. Ross Colton gets one of the coolest goals of the year. He's picking up the garbage from his stomach. And it was just a mess in front of the net. Um, Demko, the regular goalie, was out. The Smith was in. I, I think he was fine. Uh, but you get in a position where you're everybody's flat on their stomach. The goalie, Colton. Colton just sweeps the puck in. It barely crosses the goal line, but it does. It gets through. It does. It crosses. They got the camera angles. Thank God for replay. Let's just get things right. And there's no doubt it was a goal. 3-3, three, three, huge goal. And the Az played good enough defense to take it in overtime. They outshot the Canucks 17-3 to three in the third period. Georgiev, after giving up a couple goals and the Az being outshot for a good chunk of the game, they only got, in total, 21 shots on Georgiev. 21, nothing, not really. Just outstanding. And then in overtime, um, they got it. The Canucks got a delay of game penalty with 40 seconds to go. Uh, not even for like 20 seconds to go. Well, hold on. Let me just get it right. Uh, in regulation. Yeah, I'm sorry. Nine seconds. Carson Soucy delay a game. Nine seconds. Nine seconds left in regulation. 
They draw a penalty. So the Avs go into uh, overtime on the power play. And 30 seconds in, crazy play. Uh, McCarr feeds McKinnon. He blasts it. It goes off the skate of a defender. It comes up in the air. And Meek, and uh, Val Nachushkin knocks it in with his visor. Like a, it's like a head ball, like soccer. Uh, little donk. Knocks the puck in with his head. Keesh. Header. Deesh. Game winner. Val with another overtime game winner. Think it's good to have him back? He he gets, he, first of all, he's tall, so that helps on that particular play. But he occupies space in front of the net like nobody else. And to have somebody that skilled, that talented, who's also that big and can just occupy space is incredible. So let's hear from the victors. Let's start with Bedsy. It was, it was fantastic. I thought it was a very evenly played hockey game start to finish. They just happened to capitalize on their chances earlier on the game, and then we kind of did the same thing later in the game. But highly competitive, great pace. I don't know what time it is, but it felt like the game flew by. Not a lot of whistles in the third period. Um, you know, for us, we're, what we're trying to establish on the road after not being a great road team early in the year, or throughout the course of the year, really, to go into Calgary, get a big win, coming coming from behind, falling behind early and doing the same thing tonight. It's not that I didn't like our play in the first period. It's just, like I said, they did a better job capitalizing than we did. We fell behind early. You know it's going to be a fight. And uh, guys didn't go away. We actually got a little bit better and better as the game went on, I felt like. All right. Video courtesy of uh, Altitude Sports that I watch on Fubo. And here, here's Nate the Great, leads the NHL in scoring and recognizes what a game that was. Uh, best win of the year for sure. We're really happy with our game. Um, you know, tough start, but, you know, it was just kind of a weird start. A uh, couple breaks. Um, but, yeah, we didn't quit. I thought we really dominated the third period, which is always what you want to do. And, uh, yeah, huge goal by Miko with a couple seconds left. And, yeah, we had a great third and really excited about that win tonight. In terms of what's next for the Avs, they have a couple of days off. Good for them. They next play on Saturday in Edmonton. So weird trip in Canada, but whatever. You get a couple days off. You play Edmonton on Saturday. Then they travel to St. Louis on Tuesday. Okay, fun. Great job, Avs. Absolutely great job. Best win of the year. Um, two points that you really needed outstanding great road trip great road trip you already you already kind of accomplished the ultimate goal you go on the road for four games or four games eight points you want at least four points you got four points you got it so a little bit of gravy the rest of the way um and looking forward obviously to the matchup they actually play edmonton a couple more times in and oh, three more times they play edmonton Twice at Edmonton in the final game of the year is a home game against Edmonton. So it's wild that they would have this many games against Edmonton, just like um, the Nuggets have so many games against Minnesota. So we get a lot of McKinnon McDavid down the stretch. That That's fun. We'll get to D-Max Smack in a second to get to your comments. I'm sure you're loaded up. But we want to play a game right now. And again, your comments matter. We call this game Goofy or Hammered. Is the interview subject just a goofy person or are they hammered at a sporting event? It's Vic Lombardi talking to Dolphins head coach, Smokey Hill High School graduate. I'm, I'm pointing, I'm literally pointing at Smokey Hill. It's that way. Mike McDaniel. Coach Mike McDaniel. Uh, how's Miami treating you, Mike? It's warm, it's humid. It's wonderful. Do you miss the snow because forecasts call for about eight feet of snow in Denver tonight? Yeah, you know, the grass is always greener, so uh, or the snow is always snowier, I guess. Or wetter. Hey, do you have any uh, conflicts watching Miami and the Nuggets knowing that you grew up in Denver? I have no conflicts with elite competition. Yeah. And uh, 
the Denver Nuggets um, really bring the best out of most teams. Um, and and uh, the Miami Heat, as I've observed them, don't turn down any battles. So this is fun to watch. You're exactly right. Uh, you told me that until you arrived in Miami, you had never sat front row at an NBA game. What's this experience like? I mean, not even close. Uh, um, it's unbelievable. Uh, I, uh, they're, uh, yeah, they're taller in person. Um, but the, uh, yeah, I hadn't even sniffed 15 rows from here up until two years ago when people, people like you dressed in wonderful suits like you're dressed in started interviewing me. Well, you've got a wonderful watch, dude. It looks like you get anywhere with that watch right now. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a keeper. <laughs> uh, just so you know, Jake Paul is sitting right across from you. So if you're interested in any uh, exhibition boxing matches, that guy's fighting Mike Tyson in July. There will be no fisticuffs on my end tonight. Well, you, you look like a bruiser. Thanks, Mike. Best of luck to you. Oh, my God. Hey, hey, it's the off season for well, free agency. He's sitting front row. I'm sure he's got a, a ride. Goofy or hammered? Could be both. DMAX Smack, let's get to your comments. So much to go over here. And uh, there we go with Mike McDaniel. Hammered. He brought his own. It's a goofy or hammered game. Vic starts out goofy, often is hammered. <laughs> uh, goofy. Very goofy. Uh, it's called Spurs Appreciation Week, where the Spurs play a week of home games in Austin since they don't have a basketball team. All right. Well, that's cool. Good to know. All right, I'm going to, that was the end of the comments. If you want to throw in uh, Goofy or Hammered, that's fine. I'll get to that. Uh, but let's, let's get to the comments from the beginning. D Max Mac, I love talking to you. Michael GM D Mac, have a great day. He ain't lying. He ain't lying. Michael, it's always great to hear from you. Good morning, DMAC. I'm glad they're taking 53 this year. I'm not sure what the team product will be. Uh, yeah, could be rough. You know, you look at it and you're like, well, what did they really lose? You know, um, but mm, what'd they really add? So... You might be just really seriously taking it on the chin this year. I'm okay with it. I am. Um, I I can see what's going on. I'm not going to be overly critical of what the team does on the field this year. I am. You know what? I am surprised. I thought Sean Payton was going to be in into this for the short run. And it looks more and more like Sean Payton wants to be here for a longer period of time. Okay, I can admit when I'm wrong. And the writing on the wall for Sean to be here for his five-year contract and maybe beyond, and they need it. They need it. They absolutely need it. So I think this is actually great news. Uh, according to my calculations, spot rack after the 53 for Russ and the projected rookie contracts, it leaves them about $15 million under the cap. That's not a lot of money to play with, Kevin. Good work by you. Way to go. Um, if that's true, and it sounds true, 15 million. I mean, ish. So you probably aren't going to go after a big um, name inside linebacker. Probably do ride with Singleton, Jonas Griffith, and whoever you can pick up. You don't get, I mean, because that, with that 15 million, if we're just using that as a number, you're probably going to use, I mean, why would you even waste money on a quarterback then? I mean, who are you going to get anyway? You, you might as well stick with Stidham. You're, seriously, you may as well give it your best shot with him. And I would say draft that quarterback and just try to make it work. Waiting next year for the quarterback. I mean, if you draft the quarterback and it truly does suck, You've got the draft the next year, and you got free agency. You do. You do. And the Patriots are a great example. They made a play at Mac Jones at 15. They took the last first-round quarterback off the board. 
I mean, I hate that strategy. Just sitting at 15. Oh, all right, we'll take whatever's left. Hate it. And now, you know, they had to suck it up. It's bad. Now they're going to get a high quality quarterback and they got a new coach. They're going in a different direction. Uh, good morning, Wesley. It's always good to hear from you, Wesley. Good morning. Now we'll find out what kind of talent Judge Sean is because he didn't judge well taking the job. All right. Okay. Sup, sup, Chris. Good to hear from you. Um, Christopher, I think the Cortland Sutton situation is interesting. If there is still a chance they release him, he has to be pissed. Isn't it doing him dirty by not letting him hit the market now? Uh, oh, well, he's under contract. You're paying him a lot of money. They haven't asked him to restructure. I don't think it's dirty paying a guy $14 million or whatever he's getting a year. I don't. I do not think that's dirty. No. Uh, a cornerback, yeah, on the mock draft on ESPN, Terry and Arnold's a cornerback. That would be that would be horrible. Um, watching the abs last night, it's weird, weirdly highlights close how far away the Broncos are from being relevant. The Broncos wouldn't be able to come back from a three score deficit as they are currently built. No, but that's why you have to rebuild things that's that's what they're working on uh if that's true about ps2 i personally think that's stupid how many teams won super bowls when their highest paid player is a cornerback i i couldn't agree more but i i think again this is a reason why george payton's job security is fine they're committed to patrick Sertan. they're proving it today because they're making more available space next year when they will pay him. So I think George Payton survives. I do. They're not taking Terry and Arnold at 12. If Listen, let's just get over the quarterback situation for a second, which is hard for me to do. If, if Brock Bowers, Jared Verse, Terry and Arnold were all on the board, you don't have a dynamic tight end. You got Dulcich, who's supposed to be that guy, but the dude's always hurt. And, uh, okay. And I, I just like pass rushers, period, more than corners. So you said it. Got to be forking kidding me. I gotcha. I said fucking kidding me, but, you know. Uh, can you imagine the thought of drafting a cornerback at 12 then also making PS, uh, the highest paid cornerback in the league? <laughs> I, I actually can't. That's why I think that mock is off. I, I don't think the Broncos will do that. And I am fearing they don't take a, a quarterback either. Um, or they do something dumb. <clears throat> I'm, all, I'm all right with them taking a quarterback in later rounds. Fifth, sixth, seventh round. You got three fifth round picks. No big deal to me. Best quarterback available. No problem. Sean Payne may not want to idly sit back and watch other teams take quarterbacks he likes. He may, may mortgage future draft picks. We'll see. It doesn't feel like that. Uh, DMAC, what is the snowbank going on outside? Well, it's significant for sure. But it's not, um, it's light. It's light fluffy. It's not heavy. And I, well, I've seen way worse. But, but it's, you know, it's, it's significant. Like, it's, it's definitely closed school, you know, cuddle up at home sort of thing. Um, I'll be going to work, though, later today. So I'll be driving around in it. It's, it's not the worst thing I've ever seen. It's not great. Um, you got to take your time out there. But... There was so much of a heads up. The plows will be out. If you're not from California or Texas, you'll be fine driving. There you go. Uh, <laughs> look outside. About 70 degrees right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We got no snow up here in Adams County. All right. There you go. I feel you, Adams County. Uh, morning, put your name on the quarterback you want. I'm leaning towards Knicks myself. I'm okay with Knicks or Penix. It's fine. Or JJ McCarthy. There can be more than one. The concept that there's only one is stupid. That's a 
dumb idea. My guy, Mike Evans, used to say that all the time. It's dumb. It's dumb. There can be more than one. You can eat a Burger King and McDonald's. You can have tofu and um, uh, a salad. You don't have to have just one. Uh, in regards to the Spurs, they're playing in Austin, not San Antonio. I said Austin, didn't I? Abs never say die. Uh, it snowed. Yeah. <laughs> Funny. And let's see if we got any new ones here. Uh, rebuild, rebuild, rebuild on Mike McDaniel. Goofy, but I like it a little funny. Let's just get a taste of that again for a second. Coach Mike McDaniel. Uh, how's Miami treating you, Mike? It's warm. It's humid. It's wonderful. Do, do you miss the snow? Because forecasts call for about eight feet of snow in Denver tonight. Yeah, you know, the grass is always greener. So, uh, or the snow is always snowier, I guess. Or wetter. Hey. <laughs> uh, if the Broncos don't take a quarterback with first kick pick, they better take Bowers. All right. McDaniel hammered. No snow here. Phil in Arizona. Appreciate that. How's the house inspection go? Uh, it was eight hours of inspecting my house yesterday. Four hours in the morning, four hours in the afternoon. I hope it went all right. Can you imagine a scenario where their back's against the wall that the Broncos make a wild card spot? Nah, not, I mean, not really. Not, not this year. I don't, I don't think so. I don't want to give up on the season before it starts. Then I would love to be surprised, but yeah, I don't know. Uh, already four points on this road trip for the abs. Already better than the last road trip after the all-star break. You ain't lying. They got three out of 12 points on that road trip. They already got four in this. Yes. Huge win. Great road trip. That's with all the new guys. You really couldn't ask for uh, more than that. Uh, where are you moving to, D-Max? Dang it. Yeah, I'm going to move like five miles away. Uh, like the Tech Center area. Greenwood Village Tech Center. We like that area. It's very central for the things that we need in our life. Um, we're kind of quirky people, me and my wife, we're going to live in a quirky place. We found a place that is similar to like living at a condo at Copper Mountain, which is crazy to think you found something like that. So it's just one floor, two bedroom, um, fireplace in the bedroom and the, um, living room area, big deck. Um, and doors from the bedroom that go directly out to the deck and we like it. We like it. We got to get the right price. And if we don't get the right price, we would walk away, which would suck. But, you know, we saw another home in that neighborhood, too, that was pretty sweet. So we'll see. We'll see. That's that's next on the agenda. According to the draft pick value chart. Oh, I hate that. But OK, it would probably take their third round pick to move up from 12 to eight. Oh, all right. OK. Realistically, probably a little more. That's hard, hardly mortgaging the future. Kevin, completely agree. I'm with you. I like it. Let's go. Uh, a couple more here. Rebuild, no issue with it. Been wanting it since 2017. I know Sean Payton will never say the words, but I think the organization did. It would buy them a lot of grace with the fan base. I think they're there. I mean, it's uh, um, skunk life goes on. Finally admitting to doing what the bulk of us had known and wanted them to do for years. Agree, 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 agree. I mean, how can you be mad at them for doing what is necessary to do. It's prudent. It's smart. It shows that Sean Payne is actually committed here. If you love Patrick Sertan, you should be overjoyed. He's going to get a huge deal. They'll have a projected $100 million in cap space in 2025. And they'll have a better draft pick. And they'll have more draft picks. I mean, you get one of them four-win seasons, you're in the top three of drafting. It's painful to go through. But it would be clear uh, there'd be a purpose behind it. So a 53-32 split. That's the headline. Um, I still want to trade Sertan. Not happening. I I doubt I'll I, I don't think I'll ever suggest it again because it doesn't make any sense now. 
it's clear because of this move with Russ that Sertan is going to be a keeper here. That's it. And it's like, and for everybody who says, well, you need good players. I agree. You do need good players. And Sertan is a good player. Um, it's a more prudent way to approach it because I just didn't think the Broncos with Sean Payton would ever just sort of be okay with a four or five win season. But that's what they're saying here today. That is what they're saying here today. Okay, great interactions. Love that you guys are up. Love that you're paying attention. Went a little bit longer here, but can do that today because we're on with Nate and Chad at 9 a.m. because of the snow. Uh, 9 a.m. with Nate and Chad and back to 8 a.m. with them regularly. So fun show this morning. I appreciate you riding with me. Uh, yeah, there's snow out there. It's not going to kill you. Um, I'm going to get some shoveling in between uh, the show and Nate and Chad. <laughs> but love you so much. So appreciate it. And thanks to Ed Prather. He will sell your home guaranteed. Check him out at edprather.com. And it's it's you just got to know anybody, and we're open for business here, but anybody who advertises with us on this channel, this is a grassroots operation, brother. So um, the vast majority of any money we make just goes right back in to try to do a better job for you. That is the truth. Um, everybody here or associated with this has been working for free for months and just an hour, like we just got to get going. So appreciate it. So even, even if you were just to tell one of our sponsors, hit them up, say thank you. That would mean a lot. But if you wanted to sell your house or buy your house and you use Ed Prather, I mean, that would be pretty cool. Back at 9 a.m. with Nate and Chad.